Well, this morning is our vision presentation of our vision document for 2014. So can I have somebody hand these out? One, one per family should be enough, and that way we get everyone. Bill Hybels, who founded the Willow Creek Church in, in America, and um, it's spread to the Willow Creek Association now and has impact right around the world. He runs the Global Leadership Summit, which we take our leadership team down to each year. He has a saying, which is that the local church is the hope of the world, and it's the only hope for the world, because God gave us Christians a mandate to go out and make disciples of all the nations, and we do that for the local church. There's no plan B. Now, we are the only plan. We're plan A. There's no plan B. He's given us the mandate to the local church to go do this. And that's why we as the Moore Family Church exist. We exist here to, to do what God has asked us to do. And it was many years ago, it was when Steve was pastoring actually, so it's a few years ago, where God spoke to me quite clearly one day. And he said to me, if the Moore Crusade Centre, that's what we were back then, ceased to exist, would anybody notice and would anybody care? And he said, how long would it be before somebody sitting in the car park and Vic Road looked across and thought, oh, didn't there used to be a church over there? I wonder what ever happened to it. And that really challenged me that we need to not only be a church that ministers in here, but we need to be a church that ministers out there. And I think we're doing that through a lot of our programs, our programs like MOPS and even our Girls for Girls so group is starting to have an impact and, and people out there are starting to notice but also as individuals we're making an impact. See, often we as a church we can measure our success by how many people we've got. You know, you look at some of these mega churches and you say, well, they've made it in God because they've got so many numbers. But success is not measured by your growth or your numbers. Success is measured by being obedient to God and when we're obedient to God then all that will happen you know, we will grow as individuals but also as numbers that's how we measure success now last year I was praying about our vision for this year and God gave me one word the word expect and I thought well yeah okay and and that's all I got was the word expect. And it was probably only a week or two later that then he started to challenge me that we should expect more of God in our life. To expect to see things happen. And it was really exciting. I got that and then Paul sent me a, um, an audio tape that he got from his brother or brother-in-law from a guy, a, 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 a pastor who was, had come out to Australia, the minister, and was a prophet, and he gave a word about it's time for the church to start expecting. And then I went to a regional CRC pastor's meeting over in, in Trelgan, and one of the pastors there said that she'd been challenged by God that it was time to start expecting God to move. And, and, and her challenge was, God had challenged and said, yeah, we've heard that before. You know, how many times have we heard that God's going to move in the valley and, and there's so many prophecies and nothing ever happens and we get a little bit blasé about it. But God said to her, start to expect because it's going to happen. Stop thinking, oh, I've heard that before. So that's our theme for the year, expect. So if you want to open up your document... In Ephesians 3.20, reading from the Message Bible, it says, God can do anything you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. 
And that's an awesome scripture, you know. I don't know about you, but my imagination can run pretty wild. But God says, oh, you can do more than what I can even imagine. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. And the good news is it's not my church, it's not your church, it's God's church. And he's building it. The church belongs to God and as a church we acknowledge that the leadership of the church needs to be guided and led by the Holy Spirit. And through that we submit ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Our vision should always be led by the Holy Spirit and as we submit our will to his leadership and his blessing and power will come upon us and flow through us. And we're going to continue with our, our three pillars that we've had, our three arms, relationship, restoration and reverence. Relationship, you know, the church should be all about relationship because that's what God wants. Not only relationship with God, but relationship with each other. And our relationship with God is something that must continue to grow. You know, we can't get satisfied and think that I, I, I made it in God, my relationship is fantastic, I won't do any more. It's a bit like a marriage, you know. You've got to continue to, to work at it and, and put in. You know, if you think, okay, I've got the perfect marriage, I don't need to do any more, then it's going to deteriorate. You've got to work at it. And it's the same with our relationship with God. You know, we've got to continue to work with it and, and, and grow in it. And one of the ways that we grow in it is by building and growing relationships with each other. Jesus reached out and built relationships with one key ingredient, a motive, love, and not what's in it for me. And that's how we have strong, loving relationships. And I shared, I got preached on it last year. You know, if we go into a relationship with an attitude of what can I give to this relationship rather than go into a relationship saying what can I get out of this relationship, then the relationship's going to grow, particularly if both sides of the relationship go into the attitude, what can I give? So the church should always be about relationship, putting people first. Restoration is another pillar. You know, Jesus' purpose was and is, is to restore mankind back into a right relationship with God. And as a church, our design and purpose is to help people be restored in their relationship with God and be with each other so that they're able to fulfill God's plan for them. And as a, as a church, we need to be relevant with, with the community and, and, and people. We need to be relevant in today's world. We need to present the, God's message, the way we impart it, the methods that we use, needs to be real and accessible. You know, we want it to be real to people, not airy-fairy and some super spiritual thing that people out in the world can't relate to. You know, we need to scratch where people itch. So we need to expect God. There's a real sense of excitement and expectation in the air as we enter into 2014. The church has been stirred up and prepared by God to start to see more of him in everything that we do. But as God moves, there will be challenges. And the question is, are we ready for those challenges? You know? Are we prepared to get out of the boat? You know, often we, we want to be these super Christians and say, oh, you know, I want to be a great man or woman of, of faith and I want, to, you know, I want to be like Peter or I want to be like Paul. You know, they did great things, you know. Peter the super Christian walked along and his shadow fell on people and they got healed, you know. But he, he got challenged, you know. You had to get out of the boat. He had to get out of the boat. He had to get out of his comfort zone. So are we prepared to get out of the boat? So we believe 2014 is the year to expect. To expect an encounter with God every time we come together as a church or as, as an individual. Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Luke 11, 9 to 10 says, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. 
For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. To him who knocks it will be open. In Jeremiah 29 it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So we should expect an encounter with God because God is with us. You know, he says, you know, you seek me, you look for me, you'll find me. You know, it's not him that goes away, it's us that goes away from God. And as we push into God, we should expect to see growth in ourselves and in the church because nobody can spend time in the presence of God and not change. We should expect to see signs and wonders, to see the Holy Spirit move and the ministry in our meetings for the gifts. God said in, in Hebrews 2.4, says, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders with various miracles and the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. We want to see more of that. You know, it's not something that died off with the apostles. You know, God is the same what he was yesterday, today. You know, and things like what happened to Bevan with the tape. You know, we should expect that at times. You know, because that's the God we serve, you know. We should expect to be able to lay hands on people and, and, and see that the miraculous healings. We should expect to see God answer our prayers and respond to our prayers because that's the type of God he wa- is. He wants to respond to us. But we should expect to be challenged by God and that includes getting out of our comfort zones. Because you cannot conquer new lands unless you're prepared to leave the old land. And that's one of the things that the Israelites fell short of. You know, they left the land of Egypt, didn't listen to God, didn't expect God to, to meet their needs, and they spent 40 years wandering around in the wilderness, and then they wanted to go back to the old land. We've got to be, if we want to grow in God, as a church and as individuals, and we've got to expect God to challenge us and, and that means getting out of our comfort zone at the time. It means walking across the room sometimes to talk to somebody that you might not want to talk to. <laughs> yeah. She's learned how to burp lately and it's a new novelty. So, so, and she, uh, so. she gets a good reaction too. So, so. The cry of our heart should be, I want more of you, God. But for there to be more of God in our lives, it means that there has to be less of us. And that, that can be hard sometimes because God says, okay, you know, we get all super spiritual when we pray, you know, I want more of you, God. And God says, yeah, okay, give this up. You know, well, yeah, I like doing that, though. You know, it's, it's, you know, and it may, may be something, you know, that's bad for you, that you have to give up. But it may be something that's, getting in the way of God, you know, and we've made it into an idol. And that's a challenge to say, okay, God, you identify it, you told me to get rid of it, I'll get rid of it. And one of the things I've learned is God does not always do things the way we expect. So we need to expect the unexpected. And we kind of sometimes try and put God into a box. We say, okay, I'm going to pray this, God, and you're going to do this, and this is the way it's going to happen, and this is going to be the result. And God says, okay, but no, that's not how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it completely different, and the end result will be even better than what you wanted. So we're going to expect the unexpected. To grow in our faith, we must expect to be challenged in our faith. It is only when we use our faith that it grows. It's just like in the natural, you know, You've got to use your muscles for them to grow. So if we want to be men and women of faith, then we should expect God to challenge us to grow in our faith by causing us to use it. And one of the keys is found in Hebrews 12. It says, Therefore we also, since we all are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
first thing there that, that Scripture says is that we need to be prepared to lay aside anything that stops or impedes us in doing what God asks us. But the key is keeping our eyes focused on Jesus the entire time, even when unexpected things happen. As a church, we cannot expect to stay in our comfort zone. Jesus taught the disciples to grow in their faith by getting out of their comfort zones. Relationships are important and they are one area that the enemy will attack us. So often we, and I get guilty of it, you, you, have, an, you have a conflict with somebody and you pray about it and you say, okay, I'm going to do the Christian thing, I'm going to deal with it and this is the way it's going to turn out because this person is going to repent of their sin because they, they're all, I'm never wrong, they're always wrong. And, and the relationship's going to bloom and blossom. And we go and we do the right Christian thing to this person and they react totally different to what, and, and it gets worse. And, and the natural reaction is to say, well, okay, blow you. You want to be nasty? I can be nasty too. And we've got to be aware that that's the area that the enemy will always attack is relationships. You know, he's... He's in the game of trying to tear down marriages, tear families apart, and, and tear churches apart. And that's the area that he'll attack is your relationship. So we always need to pray about it. And, and we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Yeah? Hebrews 12 says we're running a race and we need endurance because sometimes it takes a little bit of time to work through a situation. And, and you might be in a relationship that's going wrong you know, and I'm, talking, I'm not just talking about family or marriage relationships, but friendships, and they're going wrong. And sometimes we've got to endure because God's dealing with issues in that relationship. And we, but the key is that we've got to keep our eyes on God for that entire time and, and keep our attitude right. See, God tells us in Ephesians to endeavour to keep the unity, even if it means getting a little bit uncomfortable. Are we prepared to love the people that God sends our way? And that's the challenge. Because I always remember Jerry Cook shared at a conference I was at, Jerry Cook was a pastor over in America. And his church had been praying for revival for years. And one day God said to him, you don't really want revival. And he said, yes, we've been praying for it for years. And God said to him, no, because if you really want revival... Every person I send to your church, you've got to accept. And he, he challenged his church, and his church said, yeah, we want it. And they got revival right. They got every prostitute and drug dealer <laughs> and that in town came to their church. The prostitutes would work the Saturday night, come to church Sunday, still in their gear. And they would get up and they would dance on the seats and all that. And he said it was a challenge. But they got revival. And they got changed. These people slowly changed. And he said also they had to have patience and endurance because these people didn't change overnight. They still went out the next week and prostituted and did their drug dealing. He said it was a slow process. But they got revival. So are we prepared to love the people that God sends our way? And it might not be that blatant. It might just be that irritating person that sits in your seat. You come to church and somebody's sitting in your seat and they don't look the right way, they sing out of tune, they may even smell, you know. Are we prepared to love them? The key is keeping your focus on Jesus. Jesus got in trouble because of the people he hung around with. The religious people, the Pharisees, didn't think that these people were good enough. But Jesus hung around with them and, and the result was... He got revival. Our programs and strategy, as in previous years, you know, as a, as a church, we've spent time discussing our several areas. We had our vision planning meeting a while ago, and we talked about the, our seven areas and how to work them out and, and what needed changes. And then the leadership came came together and went over their notes and and, and sorted it out. So this, the areas are worship and celebration, gift-orientated ministry, family and children, youth and young adults, encouragement and care, evangelism and witnessing, and missions. 
and we'll discuss these areas over the following pages. But I wanted to say, in presenting this vision document, once again, the leadership team has spent time evaluating these aspects raised in the meetings, determining which can be achieved over the 12 months. And some issues or concepts that were discussed at the, the vision meeting may not be published in this vision because the church is not able to, to do them. You know? and we're not equipped, we're not able to achieve them in the time. You know? you know, some things, we just haven't got the manpower or, or the finances or, or stuff like that. Our goal has been to evaluate what the Holy Spirit is encouraging us to pursue. And because our vision is progressive, there may be changes or additions to the vision during the year as opportunity resources or personnel arise. And we'll look at the possibilities of individualism. Now, we might have had something that we just haven't got the finances or the personnel to do right now, but later in the year, we may. So then we'll introduce it. So just because we're not doing it now, doesn't mean that we won't do it. And, and the same with sometimes we get things added to the vision during the year. You know, we get God says to us, we want you to swing around into this area. And we're to be obedient. So, worship and celebration. Our Sunday meeting format is built around relationships. First, for our praise and worship time, which gives us an opportunity as a body to come together so we can relate to our Lord Jesus Christ for a time of singing praises and worship. And then time of communion which gives an opportunity to take time to appreciate and celebrate what Christ has achieved to make a relationship with him possible. And then we do something that's unique to this church. We stop for a fellowship round a cuppa and a chat before the time of sharing testimonies and hearing the word being shared. Now I haven't found any other church that does that. Um, we went off to a uh, Seminar a couple of years ago, Max and Jill and me and I can't remember who else, uh, they and they were talking about fellowship and a couple of times and stuff like that and Max got up and shared what we were doing. And everybody said, well, yeah, that's different, how does that work? Yeah. So as far as I know, we're unique. Uh, Trailgun don't even do it. So, so. But we do this because we believe that God values relationship, relationship with him, but also relationships with each other. So our goals for 2014 in our area of worship and celebration is for people to come with an expectant heart. That is a heart expectant to receive, but also to give, have heart to give of themselves. Give through praise and worship, but also come with a Christ-like attitude of giving themselves to minister to others through building relationships. We want people to come to expect and to encounter God, whether in their time of worship, time of fellowship, or through the word being preached. You now we need to come. You know, sometimes we get uh, Matthew kind of spoke a little bit about this morning in, in communion. Sometimes we get on autopilot, and it's uh, okay, it's a thing to do. Okay, you get up in the morning, have breakfast, get dressed, come to church see you for two hours, blah, blah, and go home. And we're on autopilot. We should come saying, okay, I'm going to expect to encounter God. Yeah? And when we come with that expectant heart, you will. But also an expectant heart to also give. Yeah? We're not just to come to receive, but we've also got to give of ourselves. We want to see an increase of the Holy Spirit to move in our meetings through the gifts for people to come to expect signs and wonders. We're a Pentecostal church. Yeah? We've got to start allowing the Holy Spirit just to move amongst us and, and touch people and, and minister through the gifts. We want to give opportunities for our younger members of the church to engage in the meetings as they are an important part of this fellowship. So we're looking at ways to engage them for the worship time by the use of drama, skits and action songs. Yeah? At the moment, a lot of our young ones are turned off, you know, and they're not in tune with praise and worship. It's for the growing ups. What we want to do is try and engage them by making them exciting. We we're, we're tossing up some ideas, you know, of um, maybe some action songs where the younger ones can participate, a bit of drama, a bit of skits, you know. Um, 
a few different things to to so it's not not just routine all the time. So we're looking at that. So maybe God's challenging you. You maybe you're artistic, and you've got a skit that you could do, or even a little play. So pray about it. We're so blessed with our talented musicians and singers, but we want to give opportunity to grow and expand our worship team with new members, particularly some younger musicians and singers. And it was good this morning to see all our young ones up playing the instruments. And, and Paul and Matthew, you know, <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. But we want to expand that, you know. We've got some talented people in our church. And a lot of talented people hide their gifts. We've got to try and pry them out of them and, and get them to use them. So we want to expand our, our range of musicians and our, our singers. And to facilitate the growth and the direction of the worship team, Paul is going to become the music director just to give it a bit of direction and, and, and coordinate it. So uh, we decided at the leadership team meeting... We asked for volunteers and everybody stepped back one step and Paul was the only one that hadn't stepped back. So, 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 but no, you don't want me to be music director because... <laughs> so, so, you want somebody that's got some musical talent. So, so Paul's going to do that. So, and that way just have a bit of... You know, we, we've got a great music team and, and they... You know, it doesn't matter who we have up here leading worship, it flows so well, but just want to make sure that we keep that unity and, and keep that vision and, and direction going. Gift orientated ministry. Our challenge last year was to feed ourselves. And as we feed ourselves, we should expect to see growth. Now, it's like in the natural. If you eat, you get bigger. Some people are bigger than others. No. Uh, but it's a continual process. Just in the natural, we need to continue to feed ourselves so it's in the spiritual. One of the ways to grow and develop in our Christian walk is to have somebody encourage and challenge you in your Christian walk. Someone who you can share with where you're at and encourage you when you're going through difficult times that are coming your way. So the challenge is if you're not being mentored by somebody, ask somebody to challenge you and be mentored with you. You know, because it's, it's good to have somebody that you can talk with. You know, particularly when you're going through difficult times and you're thinking, I can't see where God's in this. And you get a fresh set of eyes, they can say, well, maybe God's trying to show you this. And you go, oh, yeah, I didn't see that. Often when we say ministry, many people think of Bible studies or preaching. But many people do not have the call to preach or teach. Their ministry is to serve others by doing practical things such as washing dishes, cleaning or welcoming people with a smile. And some people just have that real gift to be able to go up and, and talk with somebody and, and make friends. You know, there's a type of person that makes friends so easily and, but they also like doing stuff for people, like serving people by washing the dishes or, or, or being on the whole cleaning team. So we're going to do a survey. We're going to send out a survey in a little while. Um, so if you want to do that sort of thing. Now, I've had a couple of people approach me and say, we really like washing the dishes. Can we please wash the dishes? My attitude is, well, come around my place. <laughs> you know, you know, we've got plenty of dishes. But they, they just love that. That's their gift. And they like serving people by doing that. Now, I don't like going up to people and saying, can you go wash the dishes, please? You know? But some people like doing it. So we're going to do a survey. So you can say, yeah, I want to wash dishes. I want to come around and pa- uh, mow the pastor's lawn. <laughs> so, so we've only got a small lawn, so it doesn't take long. But, but yeah. So we want to help people discover, develop and grow their ministries. You know? Because... I don't know, some people, that's their ministry and they're not using it and they're feeling dissatisfied because they're not using it. So we want to help them develop and grow their ministries. 
Now, Sunday night, we want to continue with our short-term Sunday night group studies covering various topics. Last year, we did the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Also, we did who you think you are, where you discover your identity in Christ. So this year, we're going to look at some topics such as using the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we'll, whatever, you know, if, if you've got a desire for something, you want to learn about something, if, if there's enough people, we'll, we'll set up a group and run it. Another option we're looking at is, you know, we ran it a couple of years ago where we did book reviews, you know. It's kind of like a book club. You got together and read a book and then you come together and, and discuss what you're getting out of it. So we're looking at sort of, that sort of thing. And also, because we believe relationships are important, as a church we're going to run a, a marriage relationship seminar later this year. Uh, we were going to do it in March, but it clashed with uh, Mothers on the March. So we, we rejigged it and we're going to do it later on in the year. Our small groups are one of the best ways to encourage and fellowship friendship, Christian growth, and solving the questions and training and creating opportunities for relational social interaction. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? I wrote it down, but. So, uh, are you interested in starting one? You know, we had a couple groups start last year: the Carpet Bowl one, uh, the Sewing Chat group, the Girls for Girls group. And the key is, I, I can go around and say to somebody, "I want you to start the group for this." But if you get the vision, you get the desire. It's your vision and you've got the passion for it, and then the group takes off because you've got the passion. So if you've got the passion for something, God's laying something on your heart, then come and see us about starting a group. Now we've put the men's group, Lean On Me, into recess for the time being, and instead of having the men's study group, we're looking at having various activities for the men during the year, such as a men's breakfast or, or various other activities that men can get together with. And these activities will be specifically for the men. So maybe God's challenging you to, to do something for the men. Let us know. Anybody can start a small group which can have any purpose. It can be spiritual or practical. You know, we often think, oh, should we have something like carpet bowls? Because what's spiritual about that? But when you're carrying together in a social environment, discussion and relationships are built. Jesus went fishing. What's spiritual about that? Good thing, we always caught fish. I go fishing, I never catch anything. So that's one thing you have to do when I go to heaven, you have to take me fishing. So I say. So it could be a, a group that just meets for coffee and chat, and that's what the sewing chat group is. They, they come and do a bit of sewing, have a bit of lunch, have a bit of chat, and it just build relationships. You know, if you've got a desire for a group, let us know, and we'll promote it. The criteria will be that the group that meets must be accountable to the church leadership and doesn't contradict our beliefs. And ideally, if it's a practical group, you know, try and have some spiritual input and we'll promote it in every other way, in every way. Family and children. The name of our church is the Moore Family Church. And the good news is that we continue to attract families to our church. Our children's ministry continues to grow and prosper and we're having an impact not only on the children's lives but also the families as well. I remember... A couple of years ago, we had visiting ministry. Um, Sarah Pepper's grandfather came and did a, um, a dedication. And he came into the church. I'd never met him before. He's a very elderly gentleman. has been in ministry for whenever. And he came up to me and he said to me, oh, more family church. Let's see if you live up to your name. Anyway, we had the meeting, did the dedication and, and everything else. 
And as he was leaving, he come up to me and he said, you did. I said, did what? And he said, you did live up to your name. You definitely are a family church. So our goals for 2014 for our children is as we continue to attract families, our children's ministry is an area where we have opportunity to sow spiritually into the children's lives. While the scripture in Proverbs 22.6 which says, train up a child in the way that he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it is speaking mainly to parents Many people have testified that in later life it is something that they learnt in Sunday school that the Lord caused them to remember that it brought them back to God. I don't know how many times I've heard people testify that. And our children's ministry is so important. What our Sunday school and, and even our creche and, and, and mops and all our children's ministers ministering to them is so important because they're planting that seed. But we need you. We're blessed with a great team of dedicated teachers, but as our children's ministry grows, the need for more teachers and helpers grows. So please pray about volunteering to go on the roster, whether it is an, as an emergency teacher or short-term or regular. As our children's church, Christ and toddler areas are important parts of ministry and care. We are always looking for volunteers. How about and and you can be, you don't have to put your hand up and say I want to do it for the top full twelve months. You can put your hand up and say okay, I'm prepared to go on emergency. If somebody doesn't turn up, I'm prepared to fill in or or I'm prepared to do it for two months. Mothers of preschoolers is an area that's continued to have an evangelistic impact on people's lives. Through mops, many mothers are being ministered to, and the opportunity for building relationships and restoration, restoration to many mothers who are not affiliated with the church is being created. And as the mothers are ministered to, it also helps the rest of the family. For what they need, once again, is more carers. This is an opportunity to serve by becoming a MOPS carer, being part of a team that ministers to, looks after the young children while MOPS is on, and it allows the mothers some free time to be ministered to. The more carers that we have, the more MOPS, Mums that we can have. You know, it's just a time for the mums to have some time out from having to look after their little ones and just get ministered to. So if you're getting challenged on that, if you've got a free couple of hours every fortnight on a Monday, see Jill or Joanne and uh, I'm sure they'll say, yeah, we'll take you. Creating friendships. We need to continue... Encourage to build and create relationships by reaching out to others in social activities, which include you as parents and your children. Families need friends. Friendships work not by only in keeping us together as a church, but also growing the church. And new people come into the church because they've got that relationship, that friendship that they built with somebody. Youth and young adults. Our youth group. Mission 180 continues to grow and prosper as the group meets fortnightly here at the church. It's exciting to see our youth building relationships with one another as well as growing in their relationship with God. It's also great to see many of the youth being involved in other areas of ministry in the church such as assisting in Sunday school, Christ and worship. So the youth group was born out of a, a, a vision and a passion that Robin Beck and, and Matthew and Donna had. Uh -huh. we could have gone as a leadership team and, and appointed somebody as youth leaders and it, might, it may have worked, it may not but they had the passion, they had the dream and it started off very, very slowly you know? and they kept their eyes on God you know? even when things weren't going anywhere and it, part of that reason was because they had that passion and that dream and now it's just exploding and it's growing and we've had to expand the leadership team a bit you know Peter and Charles have come on to help out as well and we're getting good numbers and not only are they coming on a Saturday to youth group but they're also coming here and they're, they're ministering they're helping out in Sunday school and, and creation and various other up here worshipping 
It's our goal for 2014 is that many of the youth have been involved in the area of worship. And as we mentioned earlier, we're looking at, to expand their involvement in this area. We're also looking at possibly the youth taking the entire meeting one, one Sunday where they'll do the whole thing. Look at that doing maybe once or twice a year. So it challenges them. They've got to get out of their comfort zone. <clears throat> we need to create and build relationships with not only the youth, but the families of those that attend youth group, as many of our youth families are not connected to, to the church. You know, if we have youth here and you don't know who they are, we need to go and walk across the room and welcome them. You, know? you, you might have the attitude, well, what have I got in common with them? You know, they're way younger than me, but it's called getting out of our comfort zone. And we have got something in common. We're both here on a Sunday. So we need to build that relationship and find out what they're interested in, what they drives their passion. And we need to uphold the youth group in prayer. The youth leaders and the youth need to be girded by our prayers. There are many pressures. You know? Youth are one area that gets attacked in, in, in the church. You know, the youth group is a very hard area to, to grow and develop because it comes under a lot of pressures. You know? Our kids today are under so much pressure from the outside world. So we just need to pray for them and we need to pray for the leaders, for them to have wisdom, godly wisdom on how to run the youth group and, and how to deal with situations that arise. Also, one of the ways that we can help out as a church is Rob and Beck and Matthew and Donna both have young families. So if we're able to help with babysitting on, on a Saturday night for a couple of hours, you know, it frees them up to concentrate on youth group. So I pray about that. And also, another area, because being youth they can't drive, they haven't got licences, so they better not be driving. So... It's transport, you know, when they have an activity, you know, whether it be here or, or sometimes they go off to have other activities. We've gone down to Youth Alive in Melbourne and, and Maui and a few other, it's transport, you know. And I've gone down to a couple and it's enjoyable. You know, you go to a Youth Alive concert and get right into it. Um, Karen helped out, she was blown away when she went down. So, transport, so... If you're able to spare, you don't have to lock yourself in and say, okay, every time youth group's on, I'm available for transport, but maybe you might be willing to help out when there's a special activity on. We'll be keep moving. I'm babbling too much. Okay, encouragement and care. You know, we need to continue to encourage and care for each other, not only in the natural, but also in the spiritual and it's good at the moment we, we have that caring attitude as a body ministering to one another. But it's something that we need to continually work at. You know, we can't just assume that it's going to happen automatically. You know, we've got the scripture there in Ephesians 4, 15. I won't read it as we run out of time. But it's the body ministering to the body. Everybody doing their part. Everybody, it's a matter of who you are can do your part, you know, get on to somebody, encourage them, stand with them, give them a phone call. It's a whole body ministering. We need to look for opportunities to encourage and care for people. Not just on a Sunday, not just in our programs, but during the week. We need to show that and share God's love with people that we encounter with. And we've got to show that love and care to them where they're at. So our goals for 2014 is visitation. You know, we all can walk across the room. We all can go up to somebody on a Sunday morning and say, G'day, how are you going? Now, that's part of the reason why we have our coffee break is so we can mix. You don't have to get out there and do a Bible study with each other. It's having a cup of coffee and discussing how you're going, what you've been up to, what are you doing this weekend, what are you doing after church. Whatever. And particularly when we've got visitors, we make them welcome. So go and say good day to them and, and invite them out. 
But we've also got to be mindful of people that can't make it on Sunday. Somebody might be sick or they've had something on. A simple phone call to say, hey, how are you going? You know, everything right? You, you know, can I help with anything? You know, can I come around for a cup of coffee? But we've got to not only do that on a Sunday, but do it during the week as well. You know, ring people up, have a cup of coffee, invite somebody home. Now, our social interaction, Pam and Karen, have done a great job organising our social activities. But this year they've decided, they felt God say to them they needed to step down and let somebody else step up and take the opportunity. So maybe God's aren't speaking to you about taking on the role. Now, you might not want to put your hand up and say, I want to do it for the whole year. Maybe you might say, well, I go, I'll just do it for one activity. So let us know if God's speaking to you. Missions. You know, not every one of us can go to the mission field. Not every one of us has got the desire to go to the mission field. But we can play our part. We do it through prayer, but also our financial support makes a difference. At the moment, we support African Action, Destiny House, Michelle Hardy up in Papua New Guinea, Life FM, and CRC Missions for our monthly missions offerings and the missions morning teas. And our sew and chat group has been doing hygiene bags to be sent off to the young girls in Kenya. Now, one of the things that I felt God stirring me in my heart late last year was we need to do more and we need to do something big. So I was seeking God and looking at various avenues and, and doors were shutting and not working and then lo and behold, Dana goes off to some conference, Victoria's conference, and through that God speaks to her about we can do more than the hygiene bags. We want to expand that. And we're going to expand that to support Masinda Primary School in Kenya, where many of the girls that get the hygiene bags are going to attend. And many of the girls don't go to school because they can't afford the school fees. The incredible thing is the school fees are $1.50 a month. Yeah, chicken feed to us. But to them it's a fortune. We can make a difference. Also, the school lacks basic equipment. It doesn't have desks or chairs or blackboards. Some of the rooms aren't finished or, or they crowd them in the room. And they're desperately in need of development. So this year we want to do some major fundraising to support these children and their school without taking away from our normal missions. So we're looking at some one-off fundraising ideas such as a dinner or a special weekend to fundraise so that we can send some money in that over so they can develop this school so that not only the young girls but the young boys can go to the school. They can say, here, here's your school fees paid for. Here's some equipment. Here's some basic school equipment that we take for granted. And we're coordinating that. We've got a contact over there at the moment and, and Dana's been in communication with her and we get regular updates of where they're going, and we want to expand that. So there'll be some major promotion of this mission area over the coming months. Our property and facility development, you know, as the church continues to grow, we want to continue to develop our property. You know, we're, at the moment we've got some work that we need to do um, to bring our building up to the requirements that the council wants, such as eliminate exit signs, some new door handles and, and things like that. And that's going to be done in the next couple of months. Our storage area at the back of the hall is progressing well and is nearly complete. Thanks to Richard for all the work he's done. And subject to the finances, eventually we want to replace the roof <coughs> because it leaks. Tie up the front of the building to make it look a bit better. Also, add some air conditioning out the back. But that's subject to finances. Evangelism and witnessing, we need to be, continue to be a soul winning church. 
because Jesus has given us the mandate, as I said earlier. He's told us to go and make disciples. The church should be where all people, those that know Jesus and those that can't, don't, can come and feel comfortable. We have that at the moment. We must always be careful that we don't lose it. We need to be sensitive to God and ensure that all people, especially visitors, feel welcome and they feel the love and grace of God. We need to be passionate about sharing the gospel. The Apostle Paul said that we need to be ready to preach the gospel in season and out of season. The challenge is, could you share your testimony? Could you lead somebody to Christ or could you defend the gospel? See, Jesus has done his part. Now it's your turn. Our goal for 2014 is we continue to update our church website and we're in the process of looking at various areas to add to that site and, and update and change some things around. But the website's a great opportunity to, to listen to the message. If you're not able to come in on a Sunday, miss them, and you want to know what was preached, you can go on the website and the message is there. You can listen to it. Or maybe you thought, oh, that message was so fantastic, I want to listen to it again. You can do that. There's also a tool. You know, we've got the business cards out in the foyer that promote the church and give somebody a card and... and and they can go on our website and see what we're about, what we believe and, and what our programs have and, and also to listen to the message. We want to up our promotion of the church. We want to start using the local media a little bit, our newspapers, so when we have an event or one of our small groups is doing something and has achieved something, we can promote it and write an article. See, our church should be a great place for people to experience God's love and grace. <clears throat> now summing up conclusion the church vision belongs to everyone you know we, it's not me as the pastor or, or the leadership team saying okay this is our vision this is what we're going to do now everybody had an opportunity to come we went out there we're in here and have input and our previous vision statements have been successful because everybody has had the opportunity to have input that's no different this year. It's not my vision. It's not the leadership team's vision. It's the church vision, and we are all the church. And as in previous years, the leadership team will continue to build on the foundations that's been laid. You know, we're not going to. God does not do U turns. You know, He doesn't say, "Okay, we're going this way." In the following year, He said, "No, we're going that way." God is a God of order, and He builds. And as a leadership team, we have and will continue to seek the Holy Spirit's wisdom on how and when to implement some things. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell us not now. We have to be obedient to that. I've got burnt in the past where God has said no, but everything in the natural said yes, and I thought, well, maybe I missed hearing it, I'll do the yes, and got burnt. So I've learnt sometimes God says no, and you can't understand why he says no, but we as a leadership team have said, okay, if he says no, we're going to say no. We understand that not all things that are mentioned in this document may occur, because they're subject to various factors such as availability of people, finances and level of importance. Towards the end of 2013, the leadership team has been seeking God's will for this church. There's been a sense of excitement and expectation that God is going to do great things in 2014. As we look back in 2013, uh, the league team, team has watched with joy and pride as we've seen people grow in their walk and their relationship with God. And we know that it will continue in 2014. Now, I look around the room and I see certain people and think, whoa, you know, what they're doing now, they weren't prepared to do 12 months ago. But they've been the, prepared to step out and be obedient to God. As a leadership team, we re realise the responsibility that has been entrusted to us to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit in the direction of the church. And our, our prayer as, as a leadership team is that you guys pray for us, that we are sensitive, that we are obedient to the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for your involvement and input in the division because the end result is that the more family church grows and all that God wants us to be, and that the name of Jesus is glorified. So on behalf of the leadership team, I present that
vision document to you guys. Um, and I am excited about 2014. Yeah. In a way, I'm a bit scared. You think, oh, I wonder what you're going to do. Because I know you're going to challenge me to get out of my comfort zone. And I'm a person that likes being in my comfort zone. But I've also learnt I've got to be obedient. And God says, get out of your comfort zone. I've learnt I'm getting out of my comfort zone. So 2014, I don't know what to expect because we've got to expect the unexpected. Anyway, I've run late. I'll commit it to you guys. So let's just commit it in prayer and then finish up. Father, we thank you, Father. For you, you are a God that gives us dreams and visions. And Lord, we thank you for the dreams and visions that you place on this church. And Lord, we thank you that you don't give us dreams and visions that we cannot achieve. So Lord, we come with a sense of excitement. What 2014 is going to happen. Lord, for the growth that we're going to see in, in us as individuals, but also us as a church. Lord, we thank you for the people that you're going to touch and bring into relationship with you, Lord, for the new people that are going to come into this church. And Lord, we thank you that we have the opportunity to come together as a body and glorify your name and help you build your kingdom because you are building this church. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.